Welcome everybody at uh, What's New and Open Held Up by Howard Chu. I hope you will have a nice fast time until now. Thank you all for coming and enjoy. A warm round of applause for Howard Chu. And afterwards, there's time for Q&A. So, what's new in OpenL? I'm Howard Chu, I'm Chief Architect of the OpenLDAP project and the CTO of Simus Corporation. I'm very glad to be here at FOSDEM this year. I uh, attended for the first time last year. Never heard of this conference before and it kind of just blew my mind, so good to be here. I'm going to assume all of you are familiar with the OpenLDAP project, so I don't need to go through all the project history, but we've been around. Uh, 16 years now. Simus Corporation was founded uh, actually just after the OpenLDAP project was founded. Uh, we kind of escaped from the large enterprise software world. And of course now I'm back in the enterprise software world, so it wasn't much of an escape, but there you have it. I've actually been working on free software since the 1980s. Um, I was a GCC maintainer in the 1.0 and 2.0 days, 2.x. I did the 68000 and Intel i860 support. I invented Parallel Make. Okay, so what's new in OpenLDAP? The biggest thing that's new these days is the Lightning Memory Map database. Um, it's had a pretty huge impact just on OpenLDAP itself, but it's also spread into many other projects and it's kind of working its way through the free software infrastructure. Uh, also, we've been working with um, a NoSQL project called Hyperdex. They're based out of Cornell University. Also, the project has uh, resurrected our interoperability work with uh, Samba 4, with the Samba team. So that, that's something that we actually started uh, collaborating with them back in 2007 ran into some roadblocks and uh, that work kind of stalled out, fizzled out, but it's, uh, it's been resurrected in the past few months. So I'll cover all of these things in the talk today. Uh, how many of you have heard of LMDB, Lightning Database? Oh, very good. So um, the, we first introduced this back in the fall of 2011 at the LDAPCon in Germany. It's a very lightweight database. It has full ACID transactions. It uses multi-version concurrency control. It's extremely compact. The binary for this library, uh, the core of the library, compiles down to less than 32 kilobytes of object code. That's on x86-64. Uh, size is comparable for ARM. Uh, it uses a memory mat file, and it can perform zero copy reads. So when you access a data record from the database, you get it directly from kernels, page buffers. It's extremely high efficiency, and it's extremely simple. Um, you know, with OpenLDAP, we were using Berkeley DB. We must have had 20 or 30 configuration parameters that you needed to be aware of to tune it for optimum performance. Uh, with LMDB, there's, there are no optimization parameters. So yes, much simpler. Now the interesting thing, uh, the effect that it had on OpenLDAP was uh, uh, it revealed some other shortcomings we had in the rest of the OpenLDAP code stack. Um, you know, when we were working with Berkeley DB, there was enough overhead in Berkeley DB that it hid all of these details from us. But you know, now that we've got a much more efficient backend, we've discovered uh, there's some other deficiencies that we can work on. 
So some of this work has already been done. It's sitting in our Git repo. It'll be part of the OpenLDAP 2.5 release. Um, we just released OpenLDAP 2.4.39 a week ago. These, these changes aren't present there. So back in 2011, we discovered uh, just through testing uh, that we could get much higher throughput rates with MDB than Berkeley DB. Although uh, an interesting thing was we couldn't actually max out the performance on this server using a single SLAPD process. So with a single back MDB instance, we could get to 75,000 searches per second. But if I started a second process pointed at the exact same database, I could get up to 127,000 searches per second. And then at that point, our network was saturated. The network device driver was eating 100% of one CPU. But when I looked at this, I said, you know, there's, there's something strange here. We shouldn't actually need to run two processes on one database to get to this rate. We should be able to do this with just one process. And just a little bit of a note, again, to compare LMDB to Berkeley DB. If you look at how much work we're getting done per cycle of CPU time, you know, with Berkeley DB, you get 41 searches per percentage of CPU. And with uh, LMDB, we were getting a 101 searches per percentage. So, I mean, a lot of times people will talk about high performance code. And the point here is we're not aiming for the highest performance. We're aiming for the highest efficiency to get the most possible work done out of the smallest unit of resources. So a few months back, uh, I discovered a really handy tool called Mutrace. It's a mutex tracer that shows you where, in your multi-threaded programs, it shows you where all of your lock time is going. And this was an eye-opener for us. Uh, we found that the number one bottleneck in the SLAPD execution code was in our thread pool. And the thread pool has a single mutex controlling access to all of the work, uh, the, queue that, uh, the work that's queued up. So just a slight tweak to this thread pool to, to allow it to use multiple queues. Um, and then I found that, for example, on a quad-core laptop, if I split to use four work queues, then the thread contention actually dropped down by a factor of six. So it was very, uh, very powerful improvement. Also, SLAPD has a single uh, connection manager thread. It's a single thread that listens for all incoming socket connections. And whenever it sees activity on a socket, it passes that off to the work queue. Um, but again, what we found was this single thread was pretty good up to about an eight CPU machine. Once we got above eight, like, like testing on a machine with 16 CPUs, we found that that single thread was not fast enough to keep all the 16 cores busy. So now we actually have the ability to, to use multiple listener threads. And another change was, um, again, as I said before, the listener thread used to be responsible for all socket activity. So it would listen for, uh, you know, it would use select or epoll or whatever to check to see if a socket was readable and if a socket was writable. Now it turns out that um, checking for writable sockets isn't something we need to do very often. It only happens when a client has stopped reading sufficiently that network back, uh, buffers have backed up. But anyway, we've, we've changed this so that whenever a writer thread blocks, instead of asking the main listener thread to do a select for it, it just does a select itself. So the main listener thread is a lot less burdened. So just to give you an idea of how, how these front end changes have affected things, um, on the left there is the current OpenLDAP 2.4, and on the right is the 2.5 code that's in Git. Um, the three columns, the blue column is search rate, the orange is authentication rate, and the yellow is modification rate. So you can see there's just about a, a straight 20% performance boost all across the board.
And just again to put these numbers into context against the field of other servers, you know, I've been coming to lots of conferences over the years and saying since 2005, OpenLDAP is the world's fastest LDAP server. Yeah, and that's so this is what nine years running now. But you know, just to show you against other open uh, open source servers and against other proprietary servers. So some of these are labeled, you know, other one, two, three, and four. Um, you know, the license agreements from CA and Oracle don't allow us to point out the actual benchmark results. But you know, you can you can see in general. Now the, the numbers here on the far left is OpenLDAP 2.4, and again the blue is for search. Uh, the orange is for search in a mixed read-write load. So the blue column is just a pure search load where there's no write traffic. The orange column is search, search load when there is write traffic. The yellow column is a pure write load with nothing else. And the green column is a write load mixed with reads. There's an interesting one on other number two. They actually do extremely fast in a pure search load. But as soon as you throw write traffic into there, you see that their performance plummets. So this is one of the characteristics that stands out with LMDB. Uh, because we do multi-version con concurrency control, where readers don't block writers and writers don't block readers, you know, we can do mixed workloads without having a major impact on our throughput. Over on the far right, there's Active Directory and Apache Directory. One of the interesting things I found about Active Directory is that their writes are actually faster than their reads. So they're um, the opposite of what you expect in an LDAP server, aside from the fact that it works poorly. But OK, so that's, that's the state of the world today. And then this is the state of the world with the improvements in OpenLDAP 2.5. Okay, so with all of this uh, going on with LMDB, I've, uh, I realized that we could do some interesting things in other projects too. Um, if you look at other embedded databases that are available out there on the market, you know, we blow them all away. Uh, so many other projects have come onto the bandwagon and adopted LMDB with us. Uh, just recently, <laughs> After many months of, of painful development work, uh, the Postfix project came online. Uh, we've also been working with the CF Engine guys and many other open source projects. Uh, there are, of course, a few closed source projects out there that are uh, working with us as well. Um, VMware and, and a few others to name. One of the important things that's been driving this recently is, you know, over the past summer, uh, Oracle changed the license on Berkeley DB 6.0. They changed it from their, you know, copyleft style license to the Afero GPL v3. And one of the constraints of this license is that if you offer a network service, you must provide source code for, for your work and you must provide it as part of the network service. And this is something that's actually impossible for us to comply with, you know, because an LDAP server can't say to you, oh, hi, by the way, if you want some source code, go look over here. You know, that's, that's not part of the LDAP protocol. So it's impossible for us to comply with that license. So um, basically, Berkeley DB is being axed from open LDAP. You know. And in the meantime, we're also working with many other uh, NoSQL projects. You know, there's, there are uh, forks of Redis that uh, can use LMDB as its backing store. There's um, graph databases, traffic databases. Uh, there's a fork of Memcached, uh, Hyperdex, and several of these other projects. So again, just to show you how things stand relative to other well-known embedded databases. 
First, you look at the actual footprint of the code. Uh, the top number there, DB bench, is for Google's level DB. The second number there is for the same benchmark code linked against Berkeley DB. Uh, the third number is there linked against MDB. Then we've got SQL Lite 3 and uh, Kyoto Cabinets Tree DB. So you can see the difference in code size is pretty dramatic. There is nothing else as small as MDB. If you were here for the previous talk, you know, the, uh, the guys were talking about OCaml and saying th things written in C are kind of horrible because they're not type safe. I'm like, well, I suppose that might be true, but if you know what you're doing, C code is not dangerous. Okay, so uh, this, this shows sequential and random read access for a very small records. It's a 16-byte key and a 100-byte data value. On the far left, you see SQLite. Uh, next to that is Kyoto TreeDB. In the middle is LevelDB. Uh, next to that is BerkeleyDB. And then the orange on the right is MDB. So on the random read access, you know, the, the gap isn't quite as wide, but still we're, we are orders of magnitude faster than everybody else. Here's the same test using large records. This time we're using 100 kilobyte records. You can't even see the other databases. All right. Here's the same data in a logarithmic scale, just so you can put them on the map. So when, you know, when I go to these conferences and say, yes, OpenLDAP is orders of magnitude faster than everybody else, people say, oh, yeah, you're just full of shit. It's like, no, this is it. You can download this code, run it yourself on any, oops, any machine you care to run, and you'll get these numbers. Here's our write speed. Now we're cheating here because this is write, writing to a tempfs, basically a RAM disk. So we're completely avoiding disk seeks. But all of these, you know, basically all the numbers have the same trend. Now here's a more interesting test. We're using memcached. Uh, this was written against version 1.2.0. So there's a version of memcached out there called memcached.db. It was written to use Berkeley DB as its backing store. I took that code and replaced Berkeley DB with LMDB. And the, the graphs here show um, time in milliseconds. So the larger the bar, the slower it is. You can see that Berkeley DB has some extremely high, very slow maximum times. So it's got really anomalously large delays in its code. But aside from that, you know, the LMDB is pretty much on par with the performance of the pure memory memcached itself. And these tests are run with a single client thread. Now, when you introduce multiple threads into the picture, this, this is with four threads running now you see something very interesting, that the MDB is actually faster than the pure memory memcached. And the reason for this is because memcached is using uh, multiple locks in its data structures. And with LMDB, since again, readers do no locking, you know, we can scale to any number of threads without any degradation. So again, if you haven't looked at Hyperdex, I encourage you to have a look at it. It's a very nice NoSQL cluster backend. Um, they support distributed transactions. They're probably one of the very few NoSQL databases out there that has support for transactions. Uh, most of the other guys out there, if you ask them, do you support ACID, they kind of look at you funny. Hyper Hyperdex has gone through a couple stages of evolution. Originally, they had their own data store. Then they migrated to Google's Level DB, and now they have their own fork of Level DB, where where they've tried to fix some of the latency issues in Level DB. 
Um, in my GitHub, you'll find a, a fork of this that uses LMDB. So here's uh, a bit of uh, throughput results for, uh, this is using the La uh, Yahoo cloud serving benchmark, doing a se sequential insert of 10 million records. Uh, you can see the, the dark blue line on the top is LMDB and the pink line is with uh, hyper level DB. We get much higher throughput and we finish, finish the workload in half the time. You can also see the latency for level DB. It's, it's full of spikes where um, requests will get you know, responses on the order of uh, seconds after the fact. Also looking at the amount of CPU time used on the server while running these tests. You can see that to do the same amount of work, hyper-level DB used you know, almost five times as much CPU. If you read the, the, the documentation for level DB, they talk about how they, uh, they aimed for high performance. They use compression and all these other techniques to, to soak up spare CPU cycles while they're waiting for I.O. to happen. And it's like, well, you know, in the real world on a busy server, you don't have spare CPU cycles. If you've got 10,000 clients banging on you, you can't just defer some work to the background. There is no background. Yeah. This is with the same database now doing a million operations, a mix of read and writes. 80% reads, 20% writes. So again, the, the actual workload com completes in about half as much time using LMDB. And using half as much CPU. Now this is a much larger workload. This is 100 million records being inserted. And uh, so that results in like a 40, 45 gigabyte database. And we're running this on a machine that only has um, Sorry, this is 400 gigabytes. We're running this on a machine that only has eight gigabytes of RAM. So this is one of the common uh, queries that I hear about, oh gosh, you're using a memory map database. Those things suck once the data gets larger than RAM. It's like, well, that's not actually true. Um, we can easily handle data volumes much larger than the size of RAM. And we do it better than any other database. So again, we've, we get through that workload using a tiny fraction of CPU. And you can see that you know, the completion time is, again, on the order of five times faster. And here we do the same read and update job against that database. Again, completing it twice as fast using much less CPU. So as a result of this work uh, in the OpenLDAP project, we're now working on a back hyperdex so that we can do uh, clustered LDAP storage. In the current stage, there are a few LDAP features that we can't implement because the hyperdex API is still evolving and missing some features that we need. But I anticipate that in their 1.1 or 1.2 release, they'll start adding the things that we're looking for. just to touch briefly on the SAM before work. Um, you know, SAM, SAM before actually has its own LDAP server these days, and it's built on their own internal libraries. It supports Active Directory replication. It has a few problems. Um, you can't migrate easily to it from Samba 3. It's got a completely new schema. Um, it doesn't allow you access to the LDAP data the same way that Samba 3 did. Um, as I mentioned several years ago, we started uh, trying to get them to interoperate with OpenLDAP, and that work had been abandoned. Um, but now, uh, oh, also the, the work that they have right now, the, the LDAP server that they have performs very poorly. Um, I would have included them on my original slide of benchmark results, but I, I actually couldn't uh, load the 10 million records into their database 
in under a week or something. It was, it was horribly slow. So, th so they do have some performance issues that they're working with. So now that we've uh, started working with them, uh, we have actually two, two approaches. First of all, we're resurrecting the code that they have in their own code repository. But the, the other thing that we're doing is we're porting the, the modules, porting the functionality that they provided into SlapD overlays so that we can run natively inside SlapD. And the progress has been very good. You know, we've, we've got about three quarters of the Samba 4 test suite working now, which is actually quite impressive because there's thousands of tests in their test suite. So other things for OpenLDAP 2.5. Um, you know, we're still working with dynamic runtime configuration. Uh, up till now, we never allowed you to delete objects from this config tree, but we'll be supporting that in 2.5. And we'll also have uh, offline tools for manipulating the configuration. We are finally going to implement LDAP transactions, which we've been talking about for at least six years. Uh, you know, we, we can't get away from it now that Sam before needs them. And some of the internal SlapD APIs, we're just going to do some streamlining. Again, that's the typical between release re refactoring that we do. So if you look at a 2.5 source tree, what's missing? Well, back BDB is gone. Um, we actually deprecated that in 2.4, but the way we did that was we simply changed the default in the configure script from enabled to disabled. And what we found is lots of distros build OpenLDAP with explicit enable switches for everything that they turn on. So the fact that we deprecated this had no impact on the distro builds. So this time, we've renamed the configure switch. So it's still there, but you have to go looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really, really, really want to shoot yourself in the foot and build with Berkeley DB, you can, but it's a lot harder now. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so, any questions? When do you expect uh, that uh, the sum before integration could happen in one way or, or, or another, when it can be used in production? Well, our, uh, our timeline for that is to actually be able to present working code at Samba XP in May. So, soon. Any more questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> no remarks? None? Was he that good? <laughs> Can it be? Okay. How does LMDB compare to MongoDB? Well, they're very different systems. Um, you know, LMDB is a database engine which can be used by a lot of other systems. We could plug LMDB in as a backend for MongoDB if, if we wanted to. Um, but, you know, I mean, LMDB is not a network service. You know, it doesn't have a JSON or BSON layer or anything like that. It just, it's a key value store. One here. Hi. Um. Uh, what about the uh, collaboration with other uh, open directory projects like, uh, for example, OpenDS? Are there any, is that something that you can, uh, are you uh, evaluating or has been evaluated and, or? Sorry, could you ask that again? I didn't hear. Yeah, uh, the collab collaboration with other uh, directory projects open directory project, is that something that uh, has been considered? Is that something, or I don't know, like uh, open LDAP against <laughs> OpenDS oh, or other well. project, or, uh, no, I mean uh, to put together the efforts to improve both products or some way to try to? 
we, we actually do cooperate with the Apache Directory project, you know, um, mainly through their Apache Directory Studio, which we find to be an extremely good client. Um, they, the developers there have actually done some work on custom plugins for OpenLDAP configuration and other modules. So yeah, that's, that's one of the things that we do collaborate on, yeah. Okay, thanks. Are there any downsides to LMDB? It doesn't work very well on a 32-bit machine because it uses a memory map. Uh, you know, you're limited to the size of the address space, so if your data is larger than two gigabytes, it won't fit on a 32-bit server. Um, it's, it was written for LDAP, so it was read-optimized. We didn't really try to get the maximum write speed out of it. You know, if you have a workload that's very write intensive, it might not be the best choice. Hi, I'm Martin Simons. Uh, first place, I want to say that I'm very glad with the slides you presented about Samba 4. So it looks like that Samba now is opting for connecting to the Open LDAP database again. But what is the status of the project? Because I'm on the, on the mailing list of this uh, project. And it's very active, they're working very hard, but I don't know what direction they're going to take. So is it either AD what they're going to do, or is it open element, or will they present us with uh, two options? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think in the end, the open LDAP project will own that code. It will sit in the open LDAP contrib repository. Um, Beyond that, you know, I mean, the people who are working on it, you know, my company, Simus Corporation, we hired a, forma, a former Samba engineer to get this work done. So she is part of the Samba team. And, uh, you know, this, I mean, it's a very close collaboration. You know, it's, it's equal efforts on both parts. But that sounds like a fork. A fork. Is that, is that not a fork, a Samba fork uh, within OpenLDAP? Uh, I, don't, I don't consider it that. Um, the, the end goal here for Samba 4, in fact, the reason that they're supporting our work is because they want to get rid of their LDAP code. Yeah. So. Uh, the end game for this is that it, there's not going to be a fork. It's not going to be choose this or choose that. It's like this is going to be the path forward. There is still some time for questions. Yeah. Uh, what about replication and or clustering? Is there anything going on in pair with LMDB? Or should we expect only to rely on LDAP-based replication? Well, you know, again, LMDB is just a data storage engine. Uh, I view replication as a higher level function. So, you know, again, we, if we plug it into other things that provide network services, like Hyperdex or Redis or these other systems that already do replication, then that's, that's the way you provide it. Down okay. here, down, down along the front. Okay, so, and wh uh, what are the next steps for LMDB on your side? On, on which there's, kind of topics do, do you plan to work on it? There's, there's only a few little bits that are left on my to-do list for LMDB. You know, uh, at this point now, it's just getting the adoption accelerated and, uh, you know, that's about it. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.